Sukui. Greetings. I am Tad Larkin, the lore master of Mandalore. And today, I'll be digging through the archives to elaborate on the Twi'lek Jedi Knight, Ayla Sakura. It's been said that the 501st got the best of the war. We also got the worst. Anfalusia the Sept dug their metal heels into the muck of that alien hellhole and dared the Republic to come in after them. So we did. Only to be met with the month after month of flesh-eating diseases, shrieking nocturnal predators, and other sights that haunt me to this day. Cut off and for all we knew abandoned by our superiors, our only hope was Ayla Sekuda, our Jedi commander. Without her iron will, none of us would have come out of that mess with our sanity for our lives. When her death came, I hope it was quick. She earned that much. Ayla Sakura was a Force-sensitive female Rudian Twi'lek, born 48 years before the Battle of Yavin on the half-frozen, half-sun-baked world of Ryloth. She was born into the influential Clan Sakura, which was one of the few ruling clans on Ryloth, and was held in high regard amongst most Twi'leks. Despite slavery being illegal within the Galactic Republic at the tender age of just two standard years old, Ayla, like most female Twi'leks, was unfortunately sold into slavery by her uncle, Lon Sakura, to a local hut crime lord. Fortunately for her, she wasn't a slave for much longer, as in 46 BBY, a Jedi mission consisting of Jedi Master Tholm and his Padawan, Quinlan Voss, arrived on Ryloth to investigate Lon Sakura for unlicensed trafficking of exotic animals. It was then that one of the Wampas illegally imported there from Hoth got loose and went on a rampage, and the young Sakura unwittingly sent feelings of distress into the Force, which was picked up by the 11-year-old Kifar Padawan. After saving Ayla from the Wampa, both Quinlan and Tholm could sense that the Force was immensely strong in her, and took her with them back to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, where she was evaluated and accepted into the Jedi Order. Like most of the younger Padawans, she began her Jedi training in group sessions with Master Yoda until she reached the age of 10 standard years old, after which Quinlan Voss, who had already formed a Force bond with her following their first encounter, was granted permission to take her on as his Padawan learner. When the time came to construct her first ever lightsaber, Sakura chose a violet-hued crystal for herself, giving her blade a distinctive violet color, and with it, she went on to perfect her preferred lightsaber combat techniques in Form 4 and Form 5. In 32 BBY, Ayla accompanied her master on a mission to Tatooine, and was there the same time that Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and his Padawan discovered young Anakin Skywalker while searching for parts to their broken hyperdrive. The sensitivity of Voss's and Sakura's mission, however, prevented them from lending aid. A year later, fate brought her and her master back to Ryloth, where they were investigating a new narcotic spice, Glitteril, a mix between Rill Spice, commonly found on Ryloth, and Glitter Stim, commonly found on Kessel. Their search brought them to another one of Ayla's shady uncles, Pol Sakura, and once found out, he and his associate, Quinlan's cousin, Asante Voss, fed both of them enough Glitteril to effectively wipe their memories, a better alternative than just killing them, they supposed. Dumped on Nar Shadda, an amnesic Quinlan Voss, with the aid of the psychometric abilities possessed by his species and amplified by his connection to the Force, managed to piece together what happened, and with the aid of a Deveronian smuggler, Vilmar Grark, he found Ayla in Polsakura's palace on Ryloth. Ayla had no memory of the events prior to her drugging, and since then had been fed so much Glitteril spice that she had become solely dependent on her Uncle Pole, and Quinlan even gave her back her lightsaber hoping it would jog her memory, but it didn't. So, when Quinlan proceeded to kill her uncle in a fit of rage, she ran away. Quinlan wanted to go after her, but was instead persuaded to go after the kingpin of the operation, Ryloth's current senator, Chom Frey Ka, and after apprehending the senator on Coruscant, 
he surrendered himself to Jedi Master Mace Windu for retraining. Ayla, meanwhile, was still on the run, and stowed away on board the ship of a weapons smuggler bound for the interim prison world of Kifex. But her ship was shot down by the Guardians of Kifu, Kifex's sister planet and capital of the Kifu sector. Her escape pod touched down on Kifex's surface near an abandoned facility, where she heard someone calling her through the Force, the Anzadi Dark Jedi Wolf Karko, who had been imprisoned there a millennia beforehand. Freeing Karko from his stasis field, Ayla became subservient to his will. He would promise her revenge against the Jedi who killed her uncle, and in return, she'd get him off Kifex. The disillusioned young Twi'lek would also be given command of Karko's hordes of Feral and Zadi. Her chance for revenge came when Voss was assigned a seemingly unrelated mission to Kifex, and she led an Anzadi attack on the settlement he touched down in. But he and a few other Jedi escaped. However, through her and Voss's force bond, he tracked her to Karko's compound, where the estranged master and apprentice dueled. Voss refused to duel her any longer, and gave himself over to fate. But just then, Ayla began to search deep within her memory cores of her Leku to recall some semblance of her former self, when Karko blasted her with force lightning, knocking her out cold. Without hatred, as is the way of a true Jedi, Quinlan bisected Karko and recovered Ayla, and although she had reclaimed most of her memories, they had both been touched by the dark side of the Force, and Voss still had many gaps in his memory. So, Master Tholm agreed to continue her training while Voss traveled the galaxy to do some soul searching. During her retraining, Sakura traveled to the lightsaber crystal world of Ilum and constructed a new lightsaber, this one with a blue focusing crystal, in turn giving her blade the iconic blue color she is most known for carrying. By 29 BBY, after a year of retraining under Tholm and telepathic therapy with Jedi Master Plo Koon, Ayla accompanied Tholm undercover to Ryloth, where they attempted to uncover a plot to kidnap the heir to Clan Sakura, Nat, when Tholm himself was kidnapped while trying to rescue the young heir, the kidnappers being aided by none other than Vili. Nat's kidnappers were a pair of Nikto, a father and son, Tsir and Bok, members of the elite Morgukai warriors who trained to kill Jedi and wore Cortosis armor, and they worked at the behest of their employer, Karis Fen, the disgraced son of Ro Fen, leader of Clan Fen on Ryloth. Tracking the Deveronian's ship to Ord Mantell, she intercepted her old master and helped Voss drive away a gang of bounty hunters in order to catch up with Vili, who gave them leads on where to find Natsukura's kidnappers. The former master and apprentice duo traveled to the Nikto homeworld of Kintan, where Karis was holding Nat and Tholm in his fortress, and after a brief dogfight, they dueled the Morkukai warriors, which resulted in Seer losing his head and Bok his hands and honor. Ayla went on to recover Tholm and Nat, though Karis had long since retreated. For their actions in returning Nat Sakura safely to his family and rescuing a fellow Jedi, Quinlan was elevated to the rank of Jedi Master, while Ayla herself was considered to have passed her final trial, and was granted the rank of Jedi Knight. By 22 BBY, seven years later, Ayla had honed her lightsaber skills and attunement to the Force, and was already on the path to Jedi greatness when she and around 200 other Jedi were called upon to join Mace Windu in a rescue mission to the arid, ringed world of Geonosis in the Outer Rim. Sakura was an active participant in the skirmish within the Petronaki Arena to rescue Obi-Wan Kenobi, his Padawan Anakin Skywalker, and Senator Padme Amidala of Naboo, who were slated for execution, as well as the subsequent Battle of Geonosis, following the arrival of Grand Master Yoda and the Clone Army. The Battle of Geonosis would go on to ignite the Clone Wars, and Ayla, like most Jedi Knights, was given a General's Commission in the newly formed Grand Army of the Republic. However, she wasn't immediately given a command of her own. 
Seven days after Geonosis, Ayla was assigned by Mace Windu to work with Ka'amasi Jedi Master Yelnik Itkla in an extraction mission on Corellia, which had just declared itself neutral. Their mission? Find and extract an individual by the name of Ratari Tane, a former Techno Union scientist holding key data and looking to defect to the Republic to save his family. With the aid of Corellian Jedi Master Nija Halcyon and Corps Sec Inspector Rostek Horn, they put on a worthy distraction to allow Tane to escape. This wouldn't be the last covert operation Ayla would be assigned, as two weeks later, her former master, Quinlan Voss, stopped reporting back to the Jedi Council while undercover, and she was tasked to search his last known location, a massive trading station in the Outer Rim known simply as The Wheel. Posing as a mechanic searching for work, Ayla found Voss masquerading as a mercenary named Corto Voss in order to play both sides to get key intel back to the Republic, and with her aid as well as the aid of his human associate, Kayleen Hent, they managed to wrestle the plans for a separatist invasion of Kamino from a falling crime boss named Xenex. Two standard months after the Battle of Geonosis, that invasion finally came. And thanks to Ayla's, Voss's, and Kayleen's intel, they were ready for the droid forces of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. But instead of participating in the ground defenses, Ayla hopped into the cockpit of her Delta VII Aether Sprite Jedi Starfighter and aided in the defense from the air and space. In the aftermath of the Battle of Kamino, Ayla remained in Topoka City to get better acquainted with her commissioned clone forces, the 327th Star Corps, led by Clone Commander Designation CC-5052, whom was later nicknamed Bly. During her stay, she and fellow Jedi Knight Kit Fisto successfully foiled a Separatist plot to introduce a clone-targeting nanovirus, not too dissimilar from the one being developed on Kilura by CIS researchers. It is here where she began to develop an attachment for the Nautilan Jedi, and the two began a brief secret relationship before breaking it off later in the war. Four months into the Clone Wars, Ayla, along with seven other Jedi, including Kiadi Mundi, Tar Seer, Derek Bachman, Sha'a Gi, Kakruk, and Shak T, would have an unfortunate encounter with the Supreme Commander of the CIS droid armies, the Kalish Cyborg General Grievous, on the arid world of Hypori in the Outer Rim. Her troops decimated, she and her last remaining Jedi allies held up in the wreckage of an acclimator assault ship while attempting to fend off Grievous. And although she was wounded, Ayla counted herself extremely lucky to be among the four survivors of the Battle of Hypori, after a team of ARC troopers led by Alpha 77, Fordo, extracted them. Sakura would spend the next two months in recovery and meditation before returning to the front, and it is during this period where she had to face the grim news that her former master, Quinlan Voss, had gone over to the dark side of the Force and joined Count Dooku's Dark Acolytes. Quinlan had brought her back from the dark side, and all she wanted was to do the same for him. But she had her duty as a Jedi first, and was tasked to investigate CIS raids along the Corellian Trade Spine, well behind the front lines of the war at the time. All of the raids could be traced back to one planet, Deveron. So Ayla, Master Tholm, Kit Fisto, Tirasa, and Anya Kuro, known as the Dark Woman at this time, traveled to the Deveronian homeworld to investigate, and there fell into a trap set by Aura Singh, a skilled assassin hired by a traitor within Deveron's planetary government. While Fisto and Sa led clone troopers to take out the Separatist base, Ayla dueled and defeated Aura Singh, saving Thome and the Dark Woman, and sending the Jedi-hating assassin on a long vacation to the prison colony on Uvu 4. One year and five months after the Battle of Geonosis, Ayla, Bly, and the 327th won a Pyrrhic victory on the mid-rim world of New Holstis against the CIS-allied Mandalorian Protectors, and although their losses were around 60%, the key hospital world for that sector was successfully defended. 
In 20 BBY, two years after Geonosis, a battle erupted over a backwater Outer Rim world called Honiger on the edge of Hut space, sending a Separatist ship hurtling towards the planet's surface and leaking an experimental biochemical agent called Trihexaphene 1138, which ended up causing serious ecological damage to the planet. Ayla's mission was simple. She, Bly, and a small contingent of clone troops were to retrieve the scientific instrument package on the chemical. However, what wasn't so simple is that Dooku had sent his own agent to retrieve it for the Confederacy, Quinlan Voss. Their meeting at first was amicable. Voss actually saved her and Bly from an ambush by native Nogri, and attempted to explain himself, stating that he had not actually gone over to the dark side, but had feigned it to get closer to Dooku, and although she believed him, she recognized he was on a slippery slope towards the dark side nonetheless. After working together retrieving the SIP from an ancient Rakata temple the Nogri had been using, Voss proved her correct and demanded the SIP he previously promised to them, and when she refused, they crossed sabers, and Quinlan would have gotten the upper hand if it wasn't for Bly coming to at the last second and shooting him, prompting Voss to escape. Six months later, Ayla briefly accompanied Tholm on a mission to the Anzadi homeworld of Anzat to investigate the doings of Dark Jedi acolyte Sora Bolg, and with her help, they uncovered that Bolg had been hiring Anzadi combat instructors to help train a shadow army of Nikto, cloned from the Morku Kai warrior Bok on Salukumai. Ayla wasn't able to help Tholm complete his mission before being called away with the 327th to another battlefield, but it wouldn't be long after the mission to Anzat that Ayla and her troops fought alongside several other Jedi in an assault on Seleucami to end this threat. Among her allies was her old master. Quinlan had reconciled at this point, and was allowed to rejoin the Order under much scrutiny and surveillance. However, his search for the elusive second Sith that his friend Obi-Wan had been told about by Dooku on Geonosis was still a high priority for him, and his prime suspect was Sora Bolg, who just so happened to command the CIS forces on Seleucami. As the battle raged for days, Voss became so blinded by his goal of taking out Bolg that he nearly caused the death of Tholm and betrayed his fellow Jedi. But with the aid of Ayla, Kaleen, and Tholm, Quinlan was brought back from the brink of the dark side, and managed to defeat Sora Bolg without hatred. Ayla's actions on Seleucami not only saved her master and oldest friend from the dark side, but also helped take out two of Dooku's top dark acolytes, as well as the ion cannon and shield defenses, allowing the Republic fleet in orbit to bombard the CIS installation. Thus, the Nikto clone threat was no more. Following Seleucami, Sakura and the 327th were scheduled to ship off to Felucia. However, they were sidetracked and assigned to check out a backwater planet in the Outer Rim, Endor, and find out why the Seps were putting small installations on worlds with little to no importance. She didn't get her answer, however, she was trapped by the local Ewoks, who thought her a forest spirit, and sought her aid to take out a predator that had been terrorizing their village, and of course, being a Jedi, she obliged. In 19 BBY, General Sakura and her men arrived on Felucia to aid Jedi General Barriss Ophi and her Padawan Zonder in uncovering a plot by the Commerce Guild to poison the planet's water supply and clear off the native Felucians. Unfortunately for Ayla, she would not get to see the mission completed, as, during a lull in the fighting while moving with an armor column, Commander Bly and his fellow troopers received a special communication from Supreme Chancellor Palpatine himself, enacting Executive Order 66, which dictated that all Jedi officers were acting against the interests of the Republic and needed to be removed by force. Before she even realized the treachery, Ayla Sakura, like so many other Jedi during this dark period of galactic history, was gunned down by her own men, ending the legacy of one of the Jedi Order's most honorable knights. This transmission was commissioned by Posh. If you have any suggestions for future transmissions, don't be afraid to drop a comment. 
Special thanks to my patrons Wildcat144, The Grand Pope, Zexend, JTrips1997, Wirefox Terrier, AJ Can't Think of a Good Pun Right Now, Dave the Grave, Zip the Despot, Matt Patton, Cal Scarada, Nate Legends Fan95, Angry Mutt, JJ Plagiarisms, Hugs Mando, Chris Evans, and Mayo4. If you'd like to support this channel and perhaps even commission your own video topic, please visit my Patreon to find out how. Link is in the description. In the meantime, keep your calm channels open for future transmissions, and don't forget to subscribe. Tad Larkin, out.